Welcome to Tammy's Soul Speak featuring animal intuitive and medium Tammy Hendricks, offering insight, spirituality, transformation, and clarity to every soul. Now, here's Tammy. Hi, all. It's good to have you here. Good to see you. Hope your week has been going well and um, hope your day has been going well. It's been beautiful here in Asheville. Um, I got out for a bike ride and saw squirrels and didn't see any bears today, so no bear sightings. Um, I'm always like on the bear prowl, um, especially at this time of year, they come out a whole lot and they just are amazing to watch. Um, so, so glad you are joining us. It's a really special show. It's a really special topic. I'm excited to, to, to get into it with you. And I've had some great, great comments with such a great group. Um, Hi, Romy. It's so good you're here. And Angel and Light, thank you for joining. Hi, Kim. Oh, Greg, good to see you. And Claire, hi. Hey, Miss Tracy, I'm coming over for Apple Crisp later. Um, oh, hey, Julie and Pamela Hauser. Hey, Patty. Yes, Big Bear, California and Joyce. Oh, I'm excited you're here, too. Hey, Barbara Souza and Karen. I was thinking of you today, Karen. I hope you're doing well. Um, hi, Laurie. I was also thinking of you on my bike ride, actually. And I was thinking of all the wonderful posts that you do that are so uplifting to people. And that's just one of your, your heart's desires to do that. And I just think that's wonderful. Um, hey, Tammy. Wow, it's good to see you. And Ardelia from South Australia. Um, and Enzo, I'm sure, is there. And Laurie and Robin, so good to see you. Hi, Amy. Oh, good to see you. Um, yep, Karen, I'm glad you're doing well. Excellent. And hi, Troy. I've got a lot of uh, you know, new people that have joined from finding me this way or that way or joining the party, joining the group. I'm just thrilled because I feel like we're building quite a community of um, deeply caring animal lovers and, and, um, you know, animal communicators, you all are. Um, hey, Elizabeth in Michigan. Yay. Um, oh, Tracy. Yes. Save me some. Um, hi, Stacy. It's good to see you. I love all your posts too. They're very, very deep. We've got a deep group and Claire. Oh my gosh, you're here. <laughs> Claire is in the UK and it is so late for her. I love that you're here, Claire. And hey, Nanette. Oh, excellent. I'm I just I'm thrilled that you all have joined. Um, I actually have a newbie in the room beside Emmy who's sleeping over here. Um, there's my son's dog. And if she wakes up, I'll, I'll show her to you. She's a little mini palm um, who has airs, I might add. So Emmy and she are having quite a time uh, getting to know each other. Emmy tries to play with her and she just like tosses her head and walks off. It's, it's, it's quite funny. Um, she's fast asleep though. So I'll, I'll let her be that way for now. Hi, Liz. Oh, wow. S South Carolina. Yeah. Just, yep. Just down the road. Oh, you run a Chihuahua rescue. Wow. That's great. Um, and all oh, <laughs> Romy and all the, the Versace and, and bear. Um, they're also little palms. So Romy's a, a big, um, Pomeranian person, and she has some adorable, adorable um, dogs. Palms have airs. No, they do. Absolutely. This dog has airs. It's just, she's so dainty, um, very dainty, very small. So perhaps she'll wake up and um, she may be a, she may be a, um, a keeper. We'll see if she, she wants to stay. She may end up joining the gang. Um, hi, Bobby. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I've been reading, I, first of all, Thank you so much for contributing and sending me your photos of your animals and your observations about superpowers. I'm like blown away at the depth of insight you all have for these animals. And it's just amazing because you're actually superpowers are all about looking into rather than at. And so if you are talking about, hey, Jesse, oh, it's good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Um, if you, you know, think about superpowers and what that is, 
you know, do you think of Batman? Do you think of Superwoman? Um, you know, do you think of the Incredibles? That's a fave of mine, like slapping on those suits. I so get it. I'm so into that. Like just slap on my suit and I can handle anything. Um, but you know, superpowers to me, and as I've watched all the animals over the years, um, are deep. They can be quite what we would call ordinary. But they can also, and it could be many, many things. I have felt very strongly that superpowers are our gifts that are needing to be unlocked. There are hidden treasures. And with that, I want to read something to you. And I, Claire, you'll recognize this because I read this to Claire. And I've read it probably to several of you on the, on the phone. But it's um, from, uh, let me see, the Big Magic. I don't know if you can see that or if I've got it right. Um, it's Elizabeth Gilbert, Big Magic, one of my favorite books. Um, before I read Cat, I've had so many experiences where animals actually displaying superpowers and actually saving my life once. They're, I mean, they definitely have, uh, you know, the heroic um, actions that they do. That's, you know, the service animals. Somebody had written in earlier about all the service animals and all the animals that have helped find things and find children. No doubt they are quite um, unique. And, it, you know, our superpowers are that. They're our unique abilities. Um, so let me read you this. It's from a chapter early on in her book called Creative Living Defined. So this, I believe, is the central question upon which all creative li living hinges. Do you have the courage to bring forth the treasures that are hidden within you? Look, I don't know what's hidden within you. I have no way of knowing such a thing. You yourself may barely know, although I suspect you've caught glimpses. I don't know your capacities, your aspirations, your longings, your secret talents. But surely something wonderful is sheltered inside of you. I say this with all confidence because I happen to believe we are all walking repositories of buried treasure. I believe this is one of the oldest and most generous tricks the universe plays on us human beings, both for its own amusement and for ours. The universe buries strange jewels deep within us all and then stands back to see if we can find them. The hunt to uncover these jewels, that's creative living. The courage to go on that hunt in the first place, that's what separates a mundane existence from a more enchanted one. The often surprising results of that hunt, that's what I call big magic. It's one of my favorite like chapters in this book. And this is, this is a magical book. It's very inspiring. <clears throat> but I do feel like the superpowers that animals have and that we have are waiting to be unlocked. If you think about it, superpowers have to be seen right? We have to recognize them. They have to come out in the world. Um, Claire, I know it's a great book. I'm glad you like it. And Robin, yes, yay. Um, and Kat, I was violently ill shortly after we moved into our current house. An angel puppy was sitting with me and I told her to go get daddy and she immediately left to bring Clark with her. That's really beautiful. That is really, you know, they, they are there um, so quickly and in a minute, that was definitely one of her superpowers, this ability to intuit and understand and assess a situation very quickly. That's really, really good. Um, but I think for you all, like for your animals, when I've been looking at some of these um, posts that you've done, you've, you know, if you, if you name some, like if you put them up and, and, and I, I just had written down a few like compassion, wisdom, insight, joy, beauty, calmness, nurturing, listening, hearing. It goes on and on. Um, so how do you know your pet has one? What do you look for? How do you know? I mean, I'm reading some of these and hang on, let me get to them. You know, Kimberly Dawn Bryant, this is Sprinkles. She helped me through a really rough few years of my life. When I would cry, she would come lay by me and give me kisses. It's the it's it's the warmth and the compassion that that Sprinkles has is definitely her super one of her superpowers. And Amy says Chloe has so many superpowers. Unconditional love brings happiness and joy. Best friend, healer. And I think Amy also has another little one coming her way. 
um, Lucky, an adorable little cat. Um, Chloe is also, and she wants me to make sure I say she's an adorable cat too. Um, and she says, by the way, Amy, that she's been talking to you about Lucky. So I don't know if you've been having conversations with her, but she's like telling me she's in on it. And, um, you know, almost I get to feel she's kind of running the show on it. So <laughs> um, she, but little Lucky is absolutely adorable. And I can't wait to see, um, Amy, how Lucky unfolds in your, in your family. Um and Nita Gomez, foster dog Georgia's superpower is the ability to ground everyone around her. I don't know her journey, but beyond blessed to have touched my lives. So we've got animals who can ground. Um, and Robin, if I could have, she wrote, I'll, I'll read it to you, but if I could have put this video up, it's the most adorable thing. And if you haven't seen it, go on the Soul Speak for Animals um, group and take a look at it. Um, but this is Robin. She says, Binky is here to teach me balance. She came to me last spring after my big boy Gabriel passed away after 11 years and she healed my loneliness. <sighs> when I'm out of sorts, she slams her feet. She's a little bunny. She slams her feet into the ground and thumps so loud. I can't believe this little bunny can make such a big sound. She's also here to teach me diet and to eat healthily and to, tells me what to eat. Her magical presence, just finding this beautiful white bunny running loose. I love this last part. This next part was like seeing a unicorn that inspired me. She now has a mate who we found at a rescue and they are so much in love and action the way they snuggle and groom each other. But the greatest takeaway, they are hilarious and curious and always up to something that makes me laugh or have to clean up, which is also funny. Um, they're joy guides absolute joy guides. And oh my goodness, don't we need joy guides in our life? Um, and Lori, I see your little um, dachshunds. Oh my God, Tyler on the right, Gracie, then Madison. And they know how to soothe a dementia confused mind. It's powerful to watch. They are, um, they are a trio. They are like in cahoots. It's, it's the gang. Um, they have joined forces. They are just adorable. And Patty Evans had sent in Kiki. She was sent by a higher power to comfort me at a very low time in my life. She reminds us to be present and balanced. Um, and Martine, um, Mila, her superpower is to be calm and balanced. Um, and she also has a little puppy, Kiro, and he uses his charm and curiosity. There, there are so many of these that are quite like, I'm, I'm amazed because all of you already get that. You already are looking into your animals um, rather than at. And that's one of the biggest, if I could teach anything with people or animals, it is, it's definitely that. Um, so what would you say? Well, let me do something first. We'll do a little, um, uh, uh, there's a, there's a rhyme to my like scatteredness. Um, Renee, could you put up that first photo? And it's, this is a photo I used in the post. I want to do a little experiment before I go on a little exercise. All right. So this is the one I used in the post. Um, I'm, I'm also, as you see these posts and I do them and they look like re real photos, they actually are. These are the animals that have come to me. Some are still with me. Some are not. Um, this is Snoopy. I want you to take a, a look at Snoopy and just look at her and tell me what you notice. Just what do you notice? What, what stands out to you? It could be her spots. It could be her tongue hanging out. What would it be? And post your comments if you, if you would, because I'd like to see what pops out? Claire, her eyes. Barbara, her eyes. Mm. Keep it up, people. <laughs> her eyes. Wow. Her knowing eyes. Stop. So her eyes. Okay. All right. Uh, look at you. She's smiling, happy to be there. Yes, yes, Joyce. Now I can't wait to tell you the story, but I'm going to hold myself back. Um, she is summing up whatever she is looking at. Yes, Tracy, Jesse, very loving. And also she looks like she's smiling. Eyes and smile. Amy, mm -hmm. Nanette, her smile. Nick, emotional support. You guys are really good. You guys are really, really good. Ardelia, 
and gorgeous spots. I love that. She's saying, you've got this, Robin. Oh, I love that. Okay, so I'm going to put up one more. If, Renee, if you put up the next picture of Snoopy, we'll do this one more time, and then I'll tell you the story, and then I'll get back to some of your stories. All right, this is Snoopy, and she's with little Katie who is probably three months old at the time, maybe a little older. What are you noticing? What about her? What does that photo say? What do you notice most? Stacy, she's like the mama figure in the group, very calming for others. Romy, they are holding hands. Bobby, consoling. Nanette, she is loving and nurturing. Susan, Susie, yeah, I will care for you. She's the caretaker, Tammy. Um, and Robin, mothering and healing. Um, Laurie, mother figure, love, yes. And Laurie, let her be. She's nurturing the baby. Leslie, she is comforting her. Susan, she loves Katie and protects her. Amy, oh, y'all are going fast. Hang on, <laughs> loving mother figure. Kat, oh my God, such incredible support, loving kindness, and just all good. Everything will be okay. Oh, Nick, I need a hug. Julie West, peaceful. Mother instinct. Elizabeth, Katie knows she can go to Snoopy for comfort. Ardelia, I'm here for you always. Comforting Tracy, that that is the mother energy. So she sees Snoopy as her mommy. Leslie, do, do you see my comments? Well, I'm reading your comments, Leslie. Did I miss something? <laughs> um, did what? I thought I, I saw something earlier. Put it up again. Um, you're so funny. Uh, Bobby, maternal, Kim Smith, home. Mm. She's away shore, Robin says. Um, so Snoopy uh, came to me in my time when I was at the shelter with my son and we were doing photos for the shelter and he was doing some uh, stuff for school. So I actually watched Snoopy and she would be in a... Um, a stall or a kennel, I guess, with other animals and all the other animals would get adopted. She would make sure they got adopted and she was always left behind. So finally somebody came along and I actually helped get her adopted to these. It was a young couple and we worked with them and she went on and I was so happy she had a home because she had been there a long time. Everybody got adopted. She just, whatever, whoever they put in, in with her got adopted. So at one point, She'd been gone a month or two, and I heard from the girl saying that there had been problems in the relationship. She didn't know where Snoopy was, and the next thing I knew, it was around July, the 4th of July, I, I came through, and Snoopy was in the cage. And I said, Snoopy, what are you doing back? How did you get back here? And I apparently the, the boyfriend had surrendered her, didn't want her anymore, and on her cage they, and it was, it was not a no kill shelter. So on her cage, they were going through over July 4th when they would close down and they were kind of doing a sweep and she was going to get caught up in that sweep to be euthanized uh, because she'd been there so long and she was a surrender, a, a return. So I remember looking really, I'd always felt connected to her. And I remember looking really closely at her and I said, I think you're meant to come to come, come with me. So that's what she did. She came to live. And I think she was supposed to all along. I think I was just slow on the uptake on that. I, you know, I was there to help her get adopted, even though I felt super connected to her. Sometimes, you know, when the intuition's there, you, your mind can argue with it. Like, oh, I'm not supposed to take her to my house. I'm supposed to help her. So she comes and it turns out she's got this amazing, like you all said, nurturing ability in her. And she she's like the Mary Poppins of the group. She makes sure everybody gets out. Okay. She makes sure, you know, everybody gets in and they get where they're supposed to be. And when little Katie came, she had severe mange. She had been thrown out and she came in 2005. Katie did. Um, and so Snoopy would, and, and in that picture, Katie actually has mange and she's very hot all the time. So Snoopy would lick her and, and take care of her. Um, so this went on for years and Snoopy developed an eye disease. Now this is going to circle back to your eyes. Okay. Fascinating. You guys picked that up. Um, 
she got an eye disease and actually after, you know, lots of medication, lost sight in one of the eyes. So we worked with her on that. And then the same thing happened to the other eye and she went completely blind. What happened, what you would think was a handicap turned out to be one of the greatest superpowers that allowed this to come through in her. She had the ability to sense and see beyond what could be seen. Just a couple of uh, examples. One is a really like, I just, I, I, I shake my head when I tell this story. Um, I would, I let everybody out and I would not put Snoopy on a leash because she would stay right with us and she'd never wander. Well, that night she didn't come in. When I took all the little dogs in, I looked and we're Snoopy. Well, we're gated and fenced and I'm panicking because she's blind, right? Like, where's the dog? So I go on this mission to find her. I, I'm running, I'm calling her and I don't hear anything, but I find her at the farthest corner of the property and she's on the other side she's on the roadside but she's looking back at me so i'm like oh my god how did you get out there? like snoop and i'm running you know how did you get out how did you get out um and she just stared at me and then i was like snoopy you're gonna get hit by a car and you come right back in whatever however you got out you come right back in right now so she heard that and she promptly went over to a hole that i couldn't see and it was at the corner of the the fence she scooted under it. She sailed right by me down the, the, the driveway. And I'm like, like, how, like, how did this happen? And, and I'm like, well, wait, I said, you go, she's heading to the house. So you go straight back to the house. So she's heading, can't see a thing heading to the house. We're 750 feet off the road. Okay. So she's got a clip to go through the grass to the house. Um, so she makes it and I'm running after her saying, you've got some explaining to do. How did that happen? So I get to the front door. She's standing there like, can you let me in? So I let her in. She makes her way to the sofa, probably the one in the in the picture, and gets up there. And I'm like, okay, so we need to talk. How did that happen? And why did it happen? And her message to me was, if a blind dog can find a hole in the property and get out, what do you think a seeing eye dog can? She was one of the wisest, most alert um, gifted with insight animals I've ever, ever seen. She also, one of the times that we were out found, I don't know how she did it. She found a little baby possum and brought it right. You know, she carried it really gently and laid it down so that we could take care of it and, and get it where it needed to be. So yes, yeah, she had a tremendous mothering ability and an ability to what you would consider, what many would consider, oh, this poor blind dog. But it's what gave her gift and ability to come through. So with all your animals, what I'm reading is you're seeing a lot of the same thing I've seen in mine. Like Butch's was his, his kind heart. That was his superpower that had I let my visual self just look at him because he looked like a rough junkyard dog. Um, I might not have ever discovered that inner depth that he had. Um, and Inky, for instance, the cat in the barn, one of the cats in the barn has a magical ability to appear and disappear. It's not, it, and I you know, like, it freaks me out when she does that um, because I can't figure out how she is doing it. And she thinks it's rather funny. She hasn't done it as much. She's older now, but she used to do it quite frequently and then be at the barn door waiting for me to let her in. I could never figure out how she had gotten out. Like, how do you do that? You have this ability to appear and disappear. Um, so yes, I mean, definitely, um, all of their superpowers, actually, if you think about it, and ours too, have to be discovered. They have to be recognized by someone, by us, by someone. There are hidden gifts. And if we don't activate them, will they forever stay within us as unrealized potential? And I have a strong feeling that superpowers and get our gifts that are meant to be used in the world. So you know, they're meant to be brought out and used for the betterment of the world. And Snoopy did that. And maybe in another situation, she wouldn't have been allowed to do that, but she had the perfect setup to activate that within us. Um, 
Claire says, superpowers that can always be seen but felt through the heart. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, and since you're up, Claire, I've got your um, question. Um, she says, my question for this topic is a little long-winded. Um, it's really not. I believe we all have pre-planned our lives prior to our earthly existence. Do animals do the same? And if so, are they already aware that they are here for some higher purpose or to assist humans in a superpower sort of way to be our animal heroes? Am I right in thinking they still retain their links to spirit, unlike us humans who don't remember once we're on Earth? That's a really great question, actually. Um, you know, it's it. I go back to my feeling that the superpowers um, have to be activated. So we have to actually be in the, the proper setting. So if you think about all the different animals and all the different places um, to realize their full potential, they have to have a reason to develop that. And do some of them absolutely know that? Yes, because just like, you know, of all the animals I've seen, some are more, conscious than others at this point in their lives. And the more conscious ones definitely have that wise sense, um, like Kim's dog, Barley, he was totally conscious and knew why he was here, very clear on it, and just kept developing himself through his relationship with her, which was very, very much of a soul, you know, soulmate situation. Um, but I do think, yes, they still retain their links very much to spirit and can communicate, especially in the transition phase. They definitely can communicate. And, and like, like we've talked about before, they go back and forth and they, they become more transparent. Um, Stacy, Leon was my goofy grounding, always laid on me when anxiety or breathing issues would arise. I will be forever grateful for his role with me here in his life. That is so beautiful. You know, once once they touch us in that way, they help us that they help us see it in ourselves. So they really guide us in by example, actually. That's that's beautiful. Um, and you know, the fact that he was goofy made him even more endearing. And goofiness in an animal actually opens up hearts. It's easy, you know, they they just kind of like we can't be you know, rigid and hard with a goofy animal. There's just, it just doesn't work. Um, so thank you for that. It's really good. Bobby, do animals find their own superpowers and how can we nurture that? Um, you know, I feel like, yes, yes. I, I feel that you can acknowledge that. If you think about children as we grew up or we have children, if you point out, or let's say you're a teacher in a classroom and you see something in a child or you see something in that animal and you see it as potential, um, you call it out, you name it, you say, oh, I love your ability to be so calm. And, and, and that child, let's say, for instance, may not even realize they have that. So it's, it helps, as Sonia Choquette would say, to be believing eyes for another. What we can't see in ourselves um, others maybe can see in us, if that makes sense. Um, but yes, they definitely, Murphy, um, my lab definitely uh, continued to develop his uh, high degree of consciousness and his ability to hold the space for everybody. Um, and all of you all have these like amazing animals like Marshmallow from Susie Everett. Marshmallow is a cat. She said one day, a beautiful cat actually. And I had to make some calls to customer service about a problem. I was getting angry and aggravated because customer service kept passing me off to someone else. Marshmallow walked out to where I was and he just started meowing over and over. I'm guessing to tell me something, maybe to distract me from the phone call. Another night I woke up Marshmallow to Marshmallow sitting on my bed, kneading my side and purring. Don't know if that meant any, any, everything. I feel like he has an intuitive sense um, of knowing like he was doing body work. He's he sees that as body work on you so that you needed to like, almost like a massage. Um, but he also has this sense of how to distract from a situation. So, um, you know, you were busy getting focused on aggra being aggravated and he could pick that up and he was like, yeah, no, I need to interrupt this pattern. So he's, he is, he's a pattern interrupter. Um, and I love this Susie. I lo I'm so glad you shared it. She also said I had a 
big red tabby cat long time ago. My mother was suffering from stage four lung cancer at the time. She was in her bedroom upstairs with her door closed. And I would find that cat always sitting outside my mother's bedroom door. He knew or could sense the cancer and upcoming death of my mom. I will never forget how he behaved and seeing that big tabby resting near my mom's door. I don't have a picture of him. No cell phones back then. What a beautiful story. And what an aware, amazing soul. He was actually holding the space for your mom while she, you know, worked through her process. And um, it was like the, the, the guide outside the door, um, the, the angel outside the door that um, is always present and, and grounding. And before I forget, and I'm going to go on here, um, if any of you have uh, questions and you want to call in tonight, we actually now have the capability for you to do that. So um, Renee can post the, the number up. And if you want to call, that's great. Um, I was thinking today on my ride about the calls and that's new. And I thought, you know, we need to do like the Red Rover, Red Rover, let callers come over thing. <laughs> so feel free. I'll be happy to talk to you about it. Um, and Nick says superpowers. Oh, <laughs> Yes, yes, that's right. I agree. You're quoting me. Our gifts are meant to be used in the world. There's, there's no point in having them if we don't use them. And, you know, I, I will, I'll say this and you'll hear me say it a thousand times. Stories are meant to be told. They're not ours that are meant to be kept. We must tell them. We must keep telling them and share them with the world. And gifts are meant to be opened and received. And I feel the superpowers are our gifts that are waiting to be opened and received. First of all, we get the gifts. And then the world gets the gift. So it's just very, very beautiful. Um, Rain, hey, their superpowers remind us that if we keep an open heart, they are profound teachers for us in many ways. Our human egos may get in the way of us learning. Yes, the open heart thing's a big deal. It's a really, it's a really big deal. I was talking to somebody who's had rescued an animal, and I was, we were talking about her superpower, the, the Lucy's superpower, and. And she said, you know, her heart has never closed, even with all the having to live in the woods and, and having things happen to her. It's she's always kept an open heart. And, I, you know, humans, it's hard to do that. It's, it's hard not to close off sometimes. Um, hey, Tammy, let me see if I can read this. All animals have superpowers not only in their lives with us, but also in their crossing to the other side. Yes. My Kobe. Yes. I remember that his unsuspected death actually pushed me forward in my life. I believe that he made me move forward. I had kind of given up because of injuries and felt that I was stuck where I am. I realized a lot with his passing that I'm not stuck and have the strength to make things better for my other cats. And I, Kobe came to me to help me through depression. You also, that is so beautiful. And thank you, um, Kobe. Oh gosh, the gifts these animals keep on giving um, no matter what. Um, you know, when, when you had mentioned, you know, you felt stuck, he was showing you through his passing that he wasn't stuck, that he he was moving on. And, and this is how you do it when you have something unexpected happen in life and, and how you do it well. And I do feel like he is still guiding, very much guiding. Um, and Laurie with Kiko, yes, she is very, very intuitive and her eyes um, speak volumes. You just have to look at her and definitely see the depth in her eyes. And Yes, Kim. Barley had a way of bringing everyone he met to the present moment, especially me. And Charmaine, this is blue. Oh, he's such an amazing healer. He always puts my heart and body at ease. If my stomach hurts, he rushes to lay where it hurts. I love him so much. This is an older picture. He is a little wider, but he's 12. He's adorable. Um, I just had um, with Charmaine... Uh, she had a deer come in her yard. Hope, Charmaine, you don't mind me telling the story. A, a deer that came in her yard, a beautiful deer that was um, looked injured and, um, you know, connected with it. And I reached out to some other animal communicators to do kind of a team, um, you know, team communication um, with the deer. And the deer felt to me that she was just needing to rest. She, she got drawn to Charmaine's house and yard and area because it felt safe to her and she felt like she could go on, but she just needed some rest. And so Charmaine got food and 
um, got all kinds of things that, um, you know, she needed like the apples and, and, and corn and things like that. Um, and she was there a lot of the day. And then in the night after we communicated with her, all oh, one of um, other animal communicators picked up her name was Muriel and she was just needing to rest. And, but the neighbors were starting to get a little bit like, what's this deer doing here? And, you know, animal control needs to be called. And we communicated with her that she needed to move on if, 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 you know, to avoid that, if she could. So she left in the middle of the night sometime and she wasn't there in, in the morning when Charmaine um, got up and, and nor did she find her all that day. Um, and I really feel like when thinking about the superpower of her, um, it was such grace and, and Claire, I mean, not Claire, um, Charmaine, you can tell me, you know, grace and beauty and, and peace and, and just compassion. She, this deer had this beautiful compassion to her that um, if you were in that presence, it, 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 it cropped that up in you. It kicked that up. So that was one of her gifts in her passing through. Um and Claire says, I feel like my girls are still using their superpowers now from the other side, guiding me through my creative journey. Uh, definitely. And they're going to help with that as you um, do your animal work in the world. And I haven't forgotten your email, by the way. I just I haven't been able to get to it and give it the proper answer I need to. Um, yes. And Claire is extremely creative and will be writing with her girls and will be, they are definitely um, assisting and very much part of the project, whatever the project is, they're right there. And that's the other thing that I, I you know, I love about animals when they've passed, they want to stay current. They want to be current in our lives. It's, it's us who kind of closes that door. They still, they're able to even help more and on a deeper level um, than even before. So I feel like, um, Claire, both your girls are very much in tune on the job with you. And, um, you know, whatever logo you create definitely needs to include them in it because that's going to be a powerful, powerful um, logo. Rain, is there a collective superpower if we have more than one animal that they may gather together to teach us? Could they decide to guide us as a unit? That's interesting. Um, yes. I mean, I, I look at mine and I look at the, the, the animals that are still on the property. Um, Snoopy has passed now, but, um, she's still teaching as you can see, and she's still able to teach through her, her photos. And as far as like all the animals I can feel on my property are helping with this effort that, that I'm doing. And especially before we have a show, I can feel all of your animals coming in. They, it's almost like this whole room gets filled with animals. Going back to what James used to say in mediumship uh, workshops that the spirits would come and watch to see how mediumship was done. The animals are definitely gathering and I can tell it by the, by the responses you have, by the insights you have. Um, it's just incredible. They're, they're on a mission. So yes, there, there is a collective kind of a, a superpower. And within each, each group, there's, for instance, you know, and we've talked about this, probably there's a bee energy and there's, you know, a hummingbird energy and there's a, uh, there's deer energy and things like that. Um, if you have more than one animal, I might suggest to you to just feel and see what the group actually feels like. What do you feel like they're, their gifts or their contribution would be. That's really, really good because we're, you know, we get focused on the individual gifts and the individual superpowers. What's the superpower of the group? And, and for mine, it has been to pull me forward. Hi, Tammy. We do hey. have a caller. We have okay. Romy on the line. Would you like to talk to her? Yes, that'd be great. <laughs> okay. Hi, Miss Romy. Hey, Romy. Hey. <laughs> Um, this is, hi. <laughs> this is actually not a question about Versace or Bear, but this is something that I've been wondering for a while, and it goes back to what somebody said about, you know, animals choosing their life, do they remember? And so it's widely in, you know, the sort of spiritual world, you know, uh, they say that we as humans choose our lives and because we, we came to learn. And so 
sometimes we choose a very hard life in order to learn that lesson, whether it's choosing an abusive home, choosing addiction, and to try to um, overcome that because they say you learn more from your struggles. And so I'm wondering if animals have the same, and I'm thinking about all those dogs who are abused, you know, they break all our hearts, you know, they're abused, abandoned, or whatever, and it's so sad. Did they choose that? You know, I have always, that's that's a really deep question, and it's a, it's a confusing situation, because especially if you go through animal shelters, or you, you look at all the animals that are, are collectively abused, and I've always felt that there is a collective purpose in that is there's a um, not that they, they, they do choose to come in and pop out, but they also choose to impact the lives. It may be they impact the life of a kennel worker and they're in the shelter. There's always a connection there with um, why they're there, how they're there. I mean, if you look at Snoopy, um, she, I, I can't remember where she came from. I don't know if she was surrendered from the beginning, but I know that her purpose was to get other animals adopted, to nurture them, to take care of them. Um, and it is very heartbreaking to see all the, um, the, the abuse, the, uh, you know, just all the things that go on out there. And I think for us, what it kicks up in us is this, it's almost like it's an incubator for us to find that within ourselves. What do we want to do about it, if anything, or can we do anything? Um, and it can feel kind of hopeless, but I do feel like it activates in us compassion. It activates uh, a question, well, do we need to do anything? How can we do something? And sometimes, and I cannot, Joyce, it may be you, I think, tell me if it's you, um, that Joyce, I believe, goes through, does some work with rescues or shelters. You correct me if I'm wrong, Joyce. Um, and she says that she connects the green light of um, her heart to all those animals she sees. So I don't know, you know, if that helps, but they can definitely feel that. Mm -hmm. I think yes, it's, it's it's like an it's overarching, awesome. overarching um compassion theme that we're all trying to learn and the animals are, are instrumental in all that. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It's good to hear your voice. It is. Uh, it it's, is. Send, it's send them love. Yours too. Oh. <laughs> oh, I always do. I, I pray for all the animals, yeah. you know, domestic or not every night, whether, um, you know, just to be taken care of, because yes. it's one of the, the things that just really breaks my heart all the time. And yeah, and especially if you pass them on the road or you see that one's been injured, it is, it's absolutely heart wrenching. And, you know, sometimes I've been on the highway and I've seen an animal come through and I, it's been too, I can't stop enough to do it, you know, to, to turn around because our minds go to action. Um, so yes, I think sometimes all we can do is call in help, you know, ask for the guides, ask for St. Francis, ask for, um, any kind of assistance that we can possibly give in our limited way that we feel we can give it. So I, you know, probably come December, you know, I always like to, to do something special for the animals in general, and maybe we can gather as a group on one of our, um, meetings here and, um, you know, do kind of a blessing of all the animals and light candles that, you know, that evening for the animals that um, have passed, the ones that are unnoticed or unremembered and ones that nobody, nobody cared about. I, I, that's, you've kind of spurred that on for me. So I appreciate that. It's really important because collective energy and collective prayer makes a big difference. I think that's a wonderful idea. I look forward to that. Oh, it's good talking to you. <laughs> it's good talking to you too. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. It's always fun when you can, um, you know, hear and, and, and hear people talk. And so feel free anytime to call in. Joyce, yes, that's correct. Um, Susie, I'm training to work as a volunteer in an animal shelter. Wow. Well, I'd like to hear more about that when you can. So I feel terrible. My puppy dog lists. Um, had an awful passing. I tried to get help, but couldn't find anyone. I still remember the last time he lifted his head and looked at me. It hurt so much. So thank you so much 
for circling back with this question. I've been trying to get to this for every time and I haven't forgotten it. Um, you know what? I have felt with all your comments about trying to get help, but you couldn't find anyone. Sometimes that's part of our journey too. I had a similar thing happen with Katie and felt like I, you know, I got all twisted up in it. And this is something that I do I feel like with animals a lot and I know the process. So, you know, our judgment of ourselves, we, we, we imprint over that. We, we project onto the situation when if you, if you look back, um, what you see as an awful passing and what we put on as suffering may or may not be an awful passing to that animal, if that makes sense. And I don't know the details and you're, you know, you're welcome to, to share if you want, but the fact that you tried to get help, but couldn't find anyone. I go back to a lot of my situations when I'm really looking at myself and I'm feeling terrible about how something happened or I could have done so much better. Um, you know, I, I, I realize if I, I did everything and if I could have helped, I would have, but sometimes doors aren't open and we're not able to do it. And it's so frustrating because it seems like we're supposed to act and that may not be what was needed. Maybe in that case, um, the lifting of his head and the looking at you was the very thing he needed in order to pass. And I know sometimes it's difficult to think about it that way, but try to reframe it and look at it from maybe a little bit of altitude. Hi, Tammy. We Hi. Have another caller on the line, Kat. Can I bring her onto the show? Absolutely. Okay. Here's Kat. Hi, Kat. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbor. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, uh, question, it, it actually, this actually just came up from yesterday in talking about superpowers, we've had an issue where there's been water leakage and it's occurred over three months and we just found out this week there's likely to be black mold. Now, the animals have avoided that room like the plague. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, they knew what was going on before we did. But my question is, what sort of dangers are there for the animals in a situation like that where there may be black mold? You know, I feel like they have an intuitive sense of what to stay away from and what that better, better than we do. You know, we like get right in it and we don't even realize yeah. it. I get a sense with your animals that they are the ones that are alerting you to it. And I would also ask, is there anywhere else I need to look? Do I, do you see anything yeah, else? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't feel like, I think, you know, black mold's not good for anybody, obviously, and it can create lots of allergies and lots of, lots of issues. But I feel like since you've caught it and that they alerted it, it's like you've got a, um, an inner alert bell going on with them. So, um, I actually feel like you caught yeah. it in time. Oh, good. That's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally Angel refused to even go into the bedroom, let alone the bathroom where the actual damage was. Wow. And so have you guys, I mean, you avoided that room as well or those two rooms? Yeah, the room, the, the bathroom is now completely sealed off and drying. We've got specialists coming out tomorrow to start working on it and do the, the mitigation and, and control. So, yeah, well, I think you definitely have a um, an inside team working on your behalf, which doesn't surprise me given all the animals and Ben and everything, you know, that, that <laughs> is guiding True. the process. Yeah, no, it, it's the truth. You've got a whole army of um, investigators yourself. So <laughs> I would just say, look, gang, I really <laughs> yeah. appreciate that. And if you see anything else, like give me the heads up because you see it before I do. Yeah, yeah, and actually, you say that they did, and I didn't notice it, um, like because there's kind of a hollow space between the guest bath, the master bath, and then the main living space, the kitchen, and the utility room, and they won't go in either bathroom or the utility room, and I didn't notice it until just well, I'd been away on trips, and then mm -hmm. I noticed, geez, Angel won't even come in for her treat at night, and found out, yep, there's 
significant mold in there. <laughs> so that's what actually drew your attention to it? Yeah, well, I, I, I noticed the water damage, but I didn't mm -hmm. think black mold. I didn't think, you know, I knew the, the drywall was wet and it was going to have to be repaired, but um, based on their reactions, and I mean, Angel wouldn't even go into that bathroom. She would not cross the threshold, the threshold at all. Wow. And that's wow. when I started to dig a little deeper, pulled the mm -hmm. trim off, and it was just mm -hmm. black. Wow. Well, you've got, you really have a good group. And you, the thing about you, you and your animals and Ben, you're all always working together. You're always working together. So it's a team effort. And the animals are, are very pleased that they were able to alert you to a, a problem. That's definitely a superpower where we were talking about, you know, heroic animals. This is, this falls in that category. So that you aren't hurt or harmed yeah. or they're not hurt or harmed. They're not as worried about themselves or like, oh, it's the dumb humans we're worried about because they're going to. Exactly. Gonna, yes, exactly. They're going to stumble <laughs> right into it. Um, yeah, it's like Angel and Guppy are walking around going, uh, like, you're, you're complaining about the smell in here and you're not doing anything. Hello. Right. <laughs> yep. Do we have to draw you a picture? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Get out well, that two by four. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. The two by four learning um, we want to avoid, but um, sometimes the animals give us that two by four learning um, in, in some very yeah. not so subtle way. So I love that. Um, so thank you so much yeah. for that. That was very helpful. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate your information. Okay. Absolutely. Bye -bye. See you later. Bye. Um, you know, it's amazing how animals do know ahead of time. Um, I know my Molly, I, I, I think Nick, I told you something that she had done um, in the basement. She was always tattling on the boys and I would get down there and she'd be like, God, you know, I was barking my specific bark that took you almost like she had a little watch. It took you this long to get here. And she would just like dismiss me the minute she had shown me anything. So the animals really, I'm so grateful because they see things I don't. And I know all of you probably have had that similar um, circumstance. Um, Tracy, I think my cat Tim's superpower is to pave like a dog. He will wrestle hard and play with my dog, Lily Bell. He is an active companion for LB who will instigate playtime as well as a great game of Red Rover. <laughs> Walter is a slower mover, so he helps LB with her need for play and activity. Um, oh, absolutely. Tim, Tim says he's kind of like... I hear the word roly poly. So he thinks he can kind of um, shape shift into anything he wants. And he's very glad that you see his, his capabilities, his many, many superpowers to change form. That's hysterical. Um, let's see. Uh, Kathleen. Hey, Kathleen. Hey, Kathy. It's so good to see you. Um, Patty freckles. Yes. 13 year old Cocker has cancer and is teaching patients understanding support and understanding about death. She's an amazing beauty and um, she has a, such a presence and such an awareness that all you have to do, Patty, and we've talked about this is just join hands with her and walk the journey with her. And she's going to show you every step of the way they always do. And she's especially, mm, I'm hearing the word graceful. She says she's filled with grace. That's beautiful. I love it when they do that. Um, oh, hey, Lisa, it's good to see you. Um, well, I have loved every bit of this. And, you know, there's one more. I haven't been able to get to all of them. But if I can get to one last question real quickly um, that somebody had sent in. Let me find it. It's Gail. And if uh, what did I do with it? it is missing in action. Here it is. So Gail had written in, my dog Diva has super hearing and I think her etheric field is very sensitive. It seems to make her very nervous and hyper alert at times, especially when I take her for a walk, which, which she doesn't completely enjoy. Is there a way I can get her to calm down? She's also wary of people until she meets them many times and she prefers people who have dogs. I get the strong sense that she's showing you what she needs. And so rather than you trying to mold her into taking her somewhere she doesn't like, try starting to be aware of what she does respond well to and work from that place. 
and that I think you'll you'll be able to communicate with her because she's trying to show you what's too much for her and what she's okay with. So I hope that helps. I wanted to make sure I got to it. So we're already at our, our time, an hour. Um, but I did want to say that next show, October 27th, is I'll have a special guest um, and would love to see you here and join the party. I'm so glad that I see so many new faces and so many familiar friends. And I'm just uh, amazed by all that you guys are um, intuiting. And I love doing the photos with you. I love sharing my, my babies with you. And, and I'm, I feel honored to be able to share them and them to be able to teach as well. But you are, you're an amazing, amazing group. And I learn from you every single time. So the conversation has begun always. And the conversation is to continue to be continued. I will see you next time. You've been enjoying Tammy's soul speak featuring animal intuitive and medium, Tammy Hendricks. 